Okay, folks. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to uh, apologize for the lack of polish on this. Um, I'm not really a YouTube streamer, and I'm not a pro. And, yeah, so it is what it is. Uh, hopefully, though, I'll be giving you guys some pretty good information. Um, so here's my XTOOL D1, and the first thing I'm going to go over uh, for my first video is um, just basic maintenance stuff. Um, things that you should be looking out for. Um, cleaning things up, how to grease the rails, how to check the belts for tightness, and that sort of thing. And uh, anyway, here we go. So I've got some things. I've got a pack of, you know, like Clorox wipes. I've got uh, some... Uh, alcohol swabs. I've got the little tiny tube of grease that the uh, D1 came with. I've got Phillips screwdriver and I've got the little bag of uh, Allen wrenches uh, that came with the uh, uh, with the plotter, uh, with the engraver. Uh, sorry, I'm a 3D print guy and sometimes uh, I'll just call it a 3D printer and I apologize because sometimes my brain doesn't work right. Anyway, so we got this thing. First thing I always do is I'll go through and just clean things up a little bit. Um, grab, a, grab a Clorox wipe or two and, you know, really just clean up uh, the frame. Now, I do use a uh, an enclosure and um, an event, uh, really a pretty good axial flow fan that works quite well. Um, I had somebody comment saying, hey, well, if your um, laser is in an enclosure, it should not get mucky and gunky. And yet, that's one wipe. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, just go through, kind of wipe the frame down, keep things nice. Now, as you're looking over the frame, you know, you'll start looking for Making sure everything is correct. Making sure everything is, there's no, I mean, there shouldn't be any cracks on the frame because honestly, it's not that high stress of an application. Um, but, you know, it gives you an opportunity to do a good visual uh, once over of your laser um, before we really get into the nitty gritty of doing maintenance. Okay. And yeah, that's the dirt. That's from eh, about two months, maybe of mostly cutting Baltic uh, birch plywood, uh, some plastic and that sort of things, but mostly Baltic birch um, cutting and engraving. Okay, you want to give everything good once over, um, including the bearing rail. Um, oh, that's the other thing. I'm going to call things uh, the names that they are in my head uh, rather than the names that they might be um, in actual reality. So, but... As I'm working on something, you'll see what it is, and hopefully that'll make sense. Okay, but again, kind of going over everything, making sure everything's nice and clean. Um, I'm going to take the head off in a couple of minutes, uh, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. But I go over the edge, and I'm actually kind of underneath the lip here, and I'm cleaning off the bearing surface. You can see I've got some where okay again doing the same thing over here and there we go okay I'm gonna flip it over do a similar thing uh, which again gives you the opportunity to kind of perform a visual check on things make sure everything looks good um, and the way that it should. Okay, again, cleaning off the bearing surfaces. All right, check them. So like I'm checking the rollers, making sure that they're looking good. They are, there's no black spots on them. Um, making sure that everything rolls smoothly, which they do. Okay, uh, while I'm here, I'll go over a couple of things. Um, this is the separate motor for the X-axis. It carries the head uh, left and right. And then underneath here is the stepper motor for the Y-axis. 
Um, I'm going to do another video where I go over checking all this and making sure it's properly adjusted, uh, but I'm not really going to cover that in this video. Okay, so I've done my visual. Um, oh, by the way, the reason why um, I don't have the rubber pads on the bottom are because I designed these little 3D printed, I've got a whole bunch of 3D printers in the background, um, designed these little 3D printed feet. They're uh, semi-spherical in nature, in, in shape. They fit exactly inside where the feet go. And the advantage of that is, is that if you're like me and you don't run your extensions on all the time because I haven't upgraded to one of those nifty um, Z-axis extensions, um, it it's, makes it really easy to just tilt your uh, laser over and, uh, and add the legs. Um, it's not going to break anything. Um, these things are printed out of PETG, uh, which is real sturdy stuff. And they're pretty handy, and uh, maybe if you're lucky, I'll pop a link to it in uh, in the description. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so I went through, cleaned everything. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to check the belts for tension. Okay, now I'm going to hold this um, carriage upward is kind of so that it's more visible. But, you know, you twang it like a guitar string. I know I'm being very scientific here and you should have just enough tension. Okay. It takes me a little bit of force to be able to pinch the belts together. And that's exactly where I want to be. Okay. Same thing for the Y axis. It takes me a little bit of force to pinch them together. Both sides. Cause again, we've got belts on both sides of the, uh, the Y axis. Um, Again, same thing. Everything's pretty good and snug. Okay? And again, as I was going through doing the cleanup, I took a moment to clean off the, um, the bearing rails. Okay? Uh, so what you're going to want to do now is apply a little bit of grease to the rails. Um, I'm sure this is not terribly high-quality grease. I mean, Peng Sheng just screams quality, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like com something that comes out of uh, the back end of a aquatic, non-flying water bird. And, uh, but here we go. So we've got this stuff. Okay, usually what I do, um, I'm assuming that this isn't going to give me cancer or turn me into the Incredible Hulk or anything like that. Uh, just take a little bit of dab, put it on my finger, and then kind of run it just along the bearing there, the, um, the, 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 the chrome rod, okay? That is the surface that the bearings run along. Okay, so you wanna just grease these a little bit. And again, you know, we're doing this piece of maintenance, eh, I don't know, maybe every two or three months. So don't worry too much about it collecting stuff because we're going to be cleaning it off frequently enough. All right. So just kind of going through. I'm not going to have the magic of video editing, so I can't just make this magically happen. And I'm in the middle of this, so I may as well continue. Uh, so bear with me as I do this. Um, I'm also kind of doing this to the ones that are up and under. Okay, because you got two sets of, of wheels. You got a set of you got a wheel there, and then you have two wheels against that bottom rod, and uh, you want to make sure they're both uh, got a got a little shot of grease on them. Okay. Once you're there, once you have that done, and I'm keeping track of this, I still haven't done the the, the upper bearing on the x-axis. Just carefully, you don't want to do it too fast carefully move it back and forth and what that's going to do is that's going to have you know kind of help move the grease along the rail and make sure everything's pretty well uh, lubricated okay uh, next I've got the laser head okay what I do with this yeah I'm going to get a new wipe because those are nasty 
Um, so again, you want to kind of do a visual on the outside and eh, it's actually not too bad. Even though the uh, label looked a little yellow, but just kind of wipe everything down. All right. Kind of give everything a visual inspection. All right. You want to make sure that this connector um, that connects the, um, the laser head to the control board, which is back here. You want to make sure the connectors in there, you want to make sure nothing's frayed. Um, you know, this is the time that you're going to find any, uh, broken or frayed wire, any, uh, insulation that's, that's rubbing on something that's wearing out. Um, and obviously if you see any of that, you're going to want to take care of that, but I'm not going to cover that in this, in this video. Okay. All right. So got that part done. Flip her back over again. All right. And reattach my head. And again, I'm going to need to add a little bit of lube to this top rail. Attach the lube. And give it a little squidgy. Again, you want to make sure that things are moving freely, back and forth. You don't want there to be any catching. Um, if there is, that's going to cause an artifact in whatever it is that you're burning. Okay, and that's obviously going to be kind of bad. All right. Um, so again, this is really not only is it um, kind of a cleaning check, but it's also uh, really going to make sure help make help you make sure that your uh, laser output is as high a quality as you can possibly make it. Okay. Usually while I'm at it, as I'm going through this, I'll go through and make sure everything's tight. Okay. I'll go through, I'll just give the screws just a little bit of a snug. You know, you don't want to be stripping these out. Um, if, if they're tight, they're tight. Uh, but sometimes you're going to find a loose one and you're gonna be like, aha, I gotcha. And, um, you know, if you get it taken care of, then that's one less thing that you're gonna have to worry about. One of those things that, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure and, uh, we're preventing. Okay. All right. And again, you're going to want to go through, go around all four corners of this. Um, you want to do the same thing on the gantry. Okay. These screws here, um, this actually helps adjust the tension. So if you're having any kind of tension issues, what you'll do is you'll loosen the screw up. Okay. And then you'll, you'll push the pulley kind of holding it like that back so that you've got more tension on the belt and then you'll tighten it up. And, uh, that's pretty straightforward. You have the same thing on the sides for the Y axis. Uh, but make note, there's one on both sides. Okay. So if you are adjusting the tension of your Y axis belts, you want to make sure that you loosen both of these screws then adjust and then tighten them. Uh, it can uh, be one of those things where you wish you're an octopus and you're not, so it can be kind of frustrating, but take your time and you'll make it work. Okay. And apart from that, other things that people look out for, people do during this phase of maintenance, um, they might, uh, you know, uh, I know there have been some people who have actually popped the top cover off of this and wiped off the blades of their fan. Um, mine isn't looking too bad, so I'm not going to worry about that now. Uh, but the other thing that I want to do is I want to pull my head off. Okay, I'm using the, the stock X-Tool Air Assist module. All right, um, so I want to remove that. Now, I replaced uh, the three mil button head cap screws um, that come with it 
with a couple of these grub screws, um, these little tiny things. Um, they're actually the same screws that you use to tighten up the drive, um, the drive gears. Uh, and as I said, I've, I'm a 3D printer guy, so I've actually got a ton of these lying around. Um, they're just three millimeter grub screws. I don't know, they're probably five millimeters long. Uh, five millimeters is about an eighth of an inch, um, and that's plenty. Okay, but while I have this at off, what I want to do is I want to take an alcohol swab. All right, and this is the time to inspect um, your lens cover. Okay, I've seen a lot of people uh, who have had problems with the glass. Either the glass is cracked um, or it got really foggy. I, I guess I'm really lucky. Uh, I've got to have over 100 hours on this thing, and I'm still on the original lens. Um, but, I don't know, after 8 or 10 hours of, of cutting or engraving, um, you, you want to take this off, and you want to make sure it's clean. Okay? And that's real easy. You take one of these little alcohol swabs that everybody's probably got sitting around in their house somewhere, or, uh, you know, take a, um, a cotton swab, a Q-tip, uh, with some alcohol. Uh, I'm using 99% um, because I use 99% alcohol for my resin 3D printers. Um, so I've got a couple of gallons of it lying around, so it's easy enough to put in, uh, in a little spray bottle. And, of course, these little um, these wipes um, are going to use a pretty high percentage of alcohol as well. Okay, but I'll go through, wipe everything off. Everything looks good. Okay, come in here, take a look at my nozzle. Uh, I know some of you guys use the, uh, the air assist module that doesn't take this cone, uh, that doesn't use this. Um, that's great. Uh, I just happened to buy this and install it, and it works for me, and so I'm going to keep using it. Uh, but you do want to inspect inside of it, make sure the hole isn't obstructed at all. Um, I know one time after I uh, cut kind of a really nasty batch of plywood that was kind of gross, um, I actually had a whole bunch of gunk that was caked up here, um, and I should have given a little bit more attention a little bit sooner. Uh, so lesson learned there. But again, clean it up on the outside. Usually if there's anything on the outside, you can just work it off with your fingernail or i don't know maybe a razor blade be careful um just to make sure everything is clean okay so that's all good put my air assist nozzle back on whoops that's what happens when you're a little nervous while you're recording a video and you tighten those things because you don't have anything else for your hands to do anyway Go in there, make sure it's all lined up. Go in, tighten up your screws. Don't want to over tighten them. Um, you know, there's this saying finger tight, and that's what they mean. I'm just using these two fingers, that's tight enough. I don't want to be sitting there cranking on it because you're going to do probably one of two things you're going to strip out the screw, or you might strip, strip out your wrench, or you're going to crush what's underneath that screw. And none of those are good, so don't do that. Okay, so I've got this, I'm put my head back on, and that's pretty much it. You know, again, you're, you're kind of going through, you're taking a look at all your wiring. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that your, your stepper motor wires, they're all properly, still properly connected. They aren't coming frayed or coming loose or anything like that. Um, you know, you want to make sure that everything is still nice and tight on your control board, which is what this thing is with the big silver button on top. Um, but that's it. Pretty straightforward. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any recommendations, suggestions, uh, requests for other maintenance videos for the X-Tool D1, uh, please drop a comment. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video, which I'm actually going to start recording in about 10 seconds.